everybody, I'm Cinnamon Cooney, your Archer Fun. Today I'm going to show you how you can paint this North American Cardinal in under 45 minutes, fully real-time, step-by-step. This is part of the Painted Bird Hop, which is a collaboration with my mom. So hopefully you have migrated, bird joke there, from her channel to my channel. We have so much going on today, but I don't want to lose track of the fact that this is a free art lesson, and it is for beginners. So let's go over the materials with my help of my husband, John. He's the disembodied voice who didn't say hi. Hello. <laughs> the disappointed voice is inside. So what he's going to do is he's going to make sure that you can see everything that I'm doing, that the camera is pointed at the action so you can see the color mixes, you can see the brush strokes, you understand the techniques as you see them. Also, if you have a question, be sure to put it in all caps so that our moderators can see it. I might answer it live on the show, but for sure that will help them get you the links or resources or anything that you need. Traceables are available on the website, free for download, as are all the other resources. Let's go over what we're using today in today's painting. As for the last pop, still yes. six by six canvas gallery wrap. That means it's got the thick little stretchers, right? We're doing thick little stretchers. The colors for today's class are phthalo blue, phthalo green, quinacridone magenta, cad red medium, cad yellow medium, burnt sienna, dioxazine purple, mars black, and titanium white. So that's what we're going to be using in today's class. Let's now I'm going to show you how to draw this in. Uh, I'm going to use a brush and paint. I'm going to use that method, but it's perfectly okay to use the traceables. Don't feel like you can't do that if that's where your comfort is because we want you to stay comfortable with these classes. Throw up a step, John, so we oh. can timestamp this later. We do try to make sure we put chapters and timestamps in so you can find your place again later if you stop in the middle of a project. All right, step one, sketch in the bird. I'm again going to use my number eight cat's tongue. This is in the Art Sherpa Red Handle line of brushes. You can find these at Michael's or the Brush Guys uh, at a pretty good price. I'm ready to draw it in. We are going to be painting around the sides of the canvas today, so that's important. I'm going to take a little of my black and brown just so I can see what I'm sketching in. And how I like to do this, I like to think about the placement of objects and the birds. So one of the things that we want to do is make sure we come over here towards this right hand side of the canvas. I'm going to give myself just the lightest little dot. That's my breaking point. Give yourself some breaks so your bird doesn't go right off the canvas, though of course it could wrap around. I'm also going to come to the bottom. I want to make sure he's got some place to perch. And so I'm going to say that my log is coming in uh, a couple inches in. So let's start by drawing in our rustic, interesting log. So this is just an old, rotted, dead tree. And to create that look, I'm going to make an uneven line on the toe of my brush, kind of meandering up and down and going off the canvas at an angle. We're all on the right-hand side of the canvas. Then I'm going to bring this down, whoop, down here to kind of show it's uh, going up the surface. I think I got a little angled there because I just got into it for a second. <laughs> all right. When I know where the, my breaks are and where he is, I need to make room. What I find is I need to make sure that I have room for his legs, right? Just for me, that's a little thing that I always like to make sure that I've got going on. So I put my belly line in first. That way, when I put the legs in, there's room for him to be perching. I'm going to draw the circles that make up his body loosely. We can change a few things as we go, but I find that it's nice to make sure that you get the basic shape. I'm gonna bring his little tail down like this. Right. I love a little cardinal tail, North American cardinal tail. Comes down like that, a little tucked down. And let's uh, bring a little wing over. You can see I'm sketching that over. On the corner of my brush, I make kind of a leaf shape. These are very basic shapes. We come in and we define the little elements of it later. One of the things that I like is there's almost a box in a cardinal head. <laughs> It's a weird deal, but it is. It's almost like a box. So if I can get that little box in, it helps me find the basic shape of his head, even if his little neck is coming here, because what I'll want to do is have his beak in the center. Now, I might switch to my number four round just so that I have some nice drawing, drawing capacity. I want to kind of sketch in his beak just a titch. I'm going to use my black and brown again. So if this is his head and he's on a three quarter, one of the things I can do is I can divide his little head in half on his square. This is just little bird trick. Come here and place my eyes and that helps me place my beak, 
which is going to be a little in perspective and pointing down. Bring that over. That's not too hard. And I'm going to remind myself with this little line here that his face kind of comes in on the side a bit for that eye. We know he's got little feathers coming up there. And with that line, I can easily place the second eye. Right? And that's just a little trick you might not know. You don't have to be super specific. You've got a traceable. But if you wanted to know how to do this, I've been getting some questions about drawing lately. I'm going to bring a little leg in at an angle closer to the tail. Right? His little leg's closer to the tail. We're going to really see the foot once um, he's on, and I'm going to give him a second leg. All right. Whether you're using the traceable or you're drawing along with me, there's nothing to do but say that's done because we've finished step one. Set third bird of the day. That's the third bird. So this is the third painting in a hop. A hop is a multi-video event where you go from one video to the next. If you're on Facebook, my mom's videos are only on YouTube, but I did create several link trees for you guys to find in the events, online, full materials list, and I made a blog on my webpage. So you can find your resources, your resources for the giveaway, because you can win a print of this bird uh, at the uh, it, by entering in the comments. My uh, moderators will throw up that link so you can see how to enter. And I'll go over it again a little bit. You can also uh, bid on this bird. Uh, there's an auction going on and there's prints for sale. So there's so much. The blog covers all of that. We'll go over it a little bit during the show. But again, we want to focus a little bit on the lesson. So um, ask questions. Uh, have fun. Let's get our angle brush. Mm. Okay. In this part, what we're going to want to do is paint in the clear sky background, which I really, really like. This is one of my very favorite colors. It is aqua. So to make this sort of aqua turquoise, I'm going to take phthalo blue and phthalo green in almost equal parts and mix them together and get them on my brush. Now you can see there's not a lot of paint on the brush because I want a very light value once again around the bird. So I'm going to come here, and I might even lighten it up from this, and paint the canvas with this aqua. Now I'm going to turn him upside down for just a second, just to make sure that I use the corner of my brush to sort of trim in that headline. See how we did there? Sometimes you can use the corner of your brush to pretty good effect. I'm going to come into where his little feathers come off a bit, because I want to be able to be expressive with his crown, his little kind of cockatiel upward thing. You can come in a bit on elements like the wing and legs. That way, when you come back and paint them more specifically, the feathers will blend into the sky well. We are going to paint around the edges of the canvas today um, because this is a gallery wrap. Mm. And that's something I do. Uh, since these, this art is all up for auction over uh, on the website, my moderators will share the links, or you can find a link to the auction on the blog. Um, since it's up for auction, I'm doing these on very good canvases. These are, I believe, level three canvases. Um, these are gallery wrapped around the edges. And whenever you're doing something that's very important, very important, not every painting, but very important, this is a canvas I prefer to use because it has a very finished look. And by being able to paint the edges like this, you don't have to worry about framing and it looks amazing on the wall. I'm happy to say that it looks like uh, we are going to make all of our times today. Mm -hmm. uh, my, when my mom and I decided to do this collaboration, we, we speculated a lot about how long uh, a painting class would take for these little birds. And then uh, what would be a challenge to ourselves while still allowing us to teach you. And we came up with a, we thought we were being so generous with ourselves, 45 minutes, because we were all both sure we could do it in 30. <laughs> Looks like we really chose well <laughs> to go with the 45 minutes, doesn't it? <laughs> now, remember, these are available after this live. So if you're wanting to do this painting, you want to follow along and do this painting, you can watch this anytime. You can pause, you can rewind, you can save. My videos are timestamped for chapters. So you can find your space again. And also, we have these things called mini books, which we provide for free. And those allow you guys to uh, have written out instructions about seven to 10 days after the show. But it's been kind of an intense week. 
Mm-hmm. So they may come out a little later than usual, just because we're catching up with everything. So what you see me here doing here is just making sure I've got the little edges painted because that's a little time consuming. And on this one, you know, except where the flowers come down, where I might put some flowers on the hidden side of the canvas as a special treat, um, mostly the edges are blue. You do want to paint them, you know, thoughtfully. You just don't need to worry about having every little detail go around. Do we have any questions? Mm, I will go over comments? Look. I don't know. We haven't. Everybody we, is so excited that we're on the third little bird. We're on the third little bird. You know, that's that's a good omen, Three Little Birds. Three Little Birds is a good omen. On your doorstep. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> Just trying to tell. Oh, right, because that's from a song, isn't it? It is. A friend of yours was very excited about that because that was from a song. Yeah. We're just going to continue to make sure that this is all blue. In the aqua. Look at that. Looks pretty good. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to mildly dry this, call this a step, come back. She forgets that she can't do that with the microphone and the hair dryer don't work at the same time. But as soon as she gets back, we'll put a step up and then she will proceed to tell you all the things that she was going to tell you that I'm not telling you because she's going to tell you. Mm. Here we go. I'm going to make sure his little his little tapes got all loose. So I like to tape down on the rotator. I'm, I'm going to let you just reset set all that. Reset him. So I like to tape them down on the, ro the rotating table. Uh, that way he doesn't slide all over. But today's tape just decided to move many, many places. If you would like to win one of the signed prints of this North American Cardinal on an 8x8, uh, beautiful 300-gram uh, Fabriano paper. It's, like, gorgeous. It's signed. It's numbered. It comes with a certificate. Just make sure that on YouTube, you leave me a dad joke. That's optional in the comments with the hashtag, the bird hop. We're going to pick somebody at random and announce the winner on the 14th during the live show that we have that day. Oh, would you like to see? All right. So this is what we're doing and we're going to have, it's going to be stamped like this with a little embossed stamp and numbered. You can kind of see it really well in the back. Yeah, you can see paper how thick that paper is. Super is. thick. It's super thick paper. Super Very thick. Paper. And paper. you can get one or two or all six birds. The burbs. I will hand in that to John again. All right. I want to throw it on the floor because it's rude of me. It's my own art. Throw it on the floor. It would be rude of me to throw my own art on the floor, which has been known to happen if I'm in a hurry. So you can enter or buy. Either is fine. Uh, you do need to be in an area that still is receiving mail. <laughs> As we know, it's different depending on where we're all living right now, how things are going. So that's our that's our condition is you got to be able to get the mail. I'm going to make an aqua. I might even add a little yellow to my aqua. And I'm going to darken this corner a little bit. See what I'm doing? Oh, we can now. Darkening this color just a little bit, the corner. I'm going to wipe off my brush on a paper towel, and then I'm going to sort of blend. Ooh. That little sky. Just, just so that what we have is maybe, let's get a little more yellow into it. It's just very dramatic around our bird. Not really a halo. But definitely, definitely something, uh, something exciting. Coming in a little yellow and a lot more white. Now, if you were doing a, a human instead of a bird, would mm -hmm. you still sketch it in that same kind of way? I mean, I would, but that's a decision you need to make of, am I there yet? Humans right? and birds actually share a lot of DNA in common, so you could probably draw them very similarly. <laughs> Everything, the secret, one of the things that at some point as you're, as you're painting and as you're drawing, you'll realize drawing a rock is the same as drawing as a cat, the same as drawing a car. So painting a rock, same as painting a cat, same as painting a cloud. There'll be a weird moment when you realize it's all the same thing, but yet different. You mean However, if you're very, very new in your journey, I recommend using a gridding method or um, a kind of bridge tool to help you learn how to draw. 
before you just jump on in with paint. The birds are so simple that um, I felt pretty confident demoing them in the show because it's circles. And if your bird gets a little pudgy, he's just cuter. <laughs> mm, I like that second coat. Looks super duper good. Let's uh, call this a step. Okay. And then come back and we're going to block in some more stuff. All right. Are we on four already? Look at us go. I need to sippy sip my coffee. Okay. So off we are to the races. Having a fantastic time. I'm going to see if... Um, getting down into this. Uh, Cinnamon. Uh, okay. Jackson had asked, what if we don't have a 6x6 six six canvas? What other canvas can you use? 8x8, 12x12, 10x10, 4x4. Because these are squares, they are friendly to resizing. Real easy to do for you at home. So you can resize that as you need to. Okay. And I want to thank Cindy and Emily for sending stars. I really appreciate that. I'm going to take this big brush, the big brush, right? And I am going to do in the rough part of the branch. I'm just getting back to, I've got my finished painting over here and my reference I like to be on top of that. Let's begin with just a little bit of black and brown to start. Quite dark. This is the dark part of our log. We're going to be rough. I'm still on a three quarter inch angle brush. You could use a bright, you could use a round. You just want something that lets you paint comfortably. I'm painting the sides so that the painting wraps around the canvas. Mm -hmm. That way, even if you see it, like if you hang it like over you, you put it in a kitchen somewhere and you can see the bottom. If the bottom is painted, it will look very, very, very nice. So that's pretty roughly worked in, isn't it? Lovely, lovely. Yeah. I'm going to get back into a half inch angle brush. I stick all my half inch angles. There it is. I'm going to get a half inch angle brush. I'm going to dip my brush in water to prime it. And I'm going to pull out a little of my green and brown together. So I want my phthalo green and my burnt sienna together. I'm making a pretty dark color. And I'm going to come up here and add a stem with a downward line. On the corner of my brush, I can kind of come along and bend that over. And then let's come here. I'm going to also uh, add a little bit of flowers and leaves down here as well so that um, we have a very finished and complete piece. Ooh. There we go. A little bit of that there. I'm going to rinse out. And while everything is kind of going on here, I'm going to do something kind of fun. I'm going to take my purple and a little bit of my brown and work them together. I'm going to get a little white involved in it. Come in and roughly pull in from the side a little bit of a bark. I take that down and then here at the top, I'm going to pull down a ledge, Let's get a little more white on here. And you can even get some yellow shocking lean up, which will gray it out mm -hmm. and come to this. And you're going to be like, oh, there's a little bit of a shelf coming down and grab some brown, roughly painted in. See how I'm being very rough with my brush and rough, not like I'm pressing hard, not like I'm being angry at it. But I'm not being refined in my brush strokes. I'm being gestural in my brush stroke. And that's going to let the tree come out. The tree needs to come out. I'm going to rinse out. I'm going to rinse out. And while I'm here, I'm going to put a little more yellow into this gray brown color that we have and put a little more brown into it. So you can see it's just coming there a little lighter. Let's add some highlights. There we go. To our wood as well. So what happens with like old bark and stuff is that, you know, you'll see dark areas and highlights. And it's really important to capture those different values as you can. 
to start speaking to the rough tree. I'm going to come back into my black a bit. You can get a little blue into it if you want it to be shocking. Mm -hmm. Come here and let's piece out a little bit of our tree with some shadows in it. That is the beginning of that. I am going to also take a little of my green and brown together again. Green and brown. They're friends. Hmm. A little bit friends. I'm going to grab some yellow and kind of lighten that green and brown just a touch. And I'm going to bring over just a little shape that implies a leaf. A little more green on there. Maybe another little shape that implies a leaf. I had more green. Again, the brown, the green, and the yellow. I'll bring this down into the edge of the canvas because, again, it will look better if it's painted. All right. Let's try that, and then we're going to come in and put its next layer in. And don't forget to thoroughly dry between your layers. That's going to help make sure that when you uh, paint the next layer in, you don't get muddied colors, and uh, it doesn't get too sticky. So thoroughly dry it. Sometimes it may take longer than what we got doing here. Make sure you thoroughly dry it. It's not, it really helps it for the layering, for going on that. So this particular piece, when it's done, um, right now, there's an auction going on. Uh, my moderators have the link, and you can also find that on the blog where you can buy this original. Well, you can bid on this original. And if the odds are ever in your favor, win one. <laughs> I mean, we started the bids at a dollar, no reserves. So I felt like May we were pretty, pretty good natured about it. Forever be in your favor. You got to give me a step and photograph it. Okay, I'm ready for you. I just, okay. Yeah. I'm just cooking this along because uh, my mom and I, when we I came up with the idea enough. of the collab, uh, this was the first bird in the collab, if you're just wandering in. did take just 45 minutes. Um, we decided that we didn't want to, you know, make you guys go through classes that were hours and hours and hours. We thought we'd just give you hours of classes and they were all different birds. We just can't stop with you, can we? Anyways, we thought it'd be real fun to let you get a lot of paintings in one kind of a day. It's sort of a hop, a little journey. And we decided that 45 minutes was our time. I don't know if that was a wise choice. I'm going to take out a little of my cad yellow and grab some of my cad red, making a very bright and warm orange. I'll take a little of my brown and mix that in there. And I'm going to begin to pop up some sunlight on my wood. That's what this is representing, is the light on the wood. That's lovely. And if you want to gray that, what do you do? You come right into that purple, don't you? Let's gray that right into the purple. So it grays because purple and yellow are kind of nearly contrasting colors. And so when you work them together, you get these gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous little light values. I'm on the corner of my brush and I'm just sort of wiggling that. We're gonna just, I wanna make sure that even our stump, even our stump is interesting. You want an interesting stump. You don't want a boring stump. Don't let your stump be boring. He's so colorful, my stump. Feels so woody and old. Mm. I'll put out a little more brown because I can see I'm kind of cooking through that today. The bird's going to be so gorgeous. So gorgeous. I love painting North American cardinals. It is my favorite. My favorite, favorite, favorite. If you are watching... Over on um, Facebook, you can enter the giveaway on YouTube, but not Facebook, because the random comment picker wouldn't work for me over there. So <laughs> that's all it is. So I'd love you to enter. Enter for your chance to win a print. I'm adding little highlights to my green, taking a little white and a little yellow and added that in. You can see we're just giving them giving them bright little highlights. The leaves a little chance to be amazing. Mm. We'll rinse out a bit. Come over here and just get a little phthalo green and yellow, which is also quite bright. I 
and add a few little moments that are down here, even at the base, even around the side. I just like to see where all the stuff will go. There we go. So as long as you have nice dark values and then you come in with some bright pops of highlights, the leaf shape, I mean, because leaves turn, even if they're a diamond, they're turn. You see parts of them, they're always in perspective. So what you want to do is just not get into the symbolic painting of a leaf where you just make a little diamond shape, but sometimes where you paint just what you could see of a leaf, mm. if that makes sense to you. I'm going to make another little dark color. And remember that sometimes it's super important when you're painting to have dark values so that there's contrast. Right? Giving yourself, even if you're going to give yourself lots and lots of light, you want to make sure you've got lots and lots of dark. There we go. It's those richnesses that make it so good. Now, richnesses. I could get a whole other brush. You could do any brush you want here. You could do round. You could do bright. If you're doing a bright, do it on the corner. If you're doing a cat stain, do it on the toe. If you're doing a half inch angle like I'm doing right now, do it on the corner. We're going to take our little bit of our yellow and some of our red here. Just some, some, some. Some, some, some. on the corner, make it kind of bright red. And let's kind of put out some individual dots, which then become a greater flower as, in, as a whole. And what that is, is this is Lantana. I believe that's what it's called. And it's a main flower that's made of many smaller flowers. I'm going to hide one here that comes kind of around the corner because I cheeky like that. Let's add another little one there. Sometimes you want big ones. Sometimes you want little ones. Right? I'm just tapping this up and down. And these are regular shapes with the orange. Yeah, we got a plan. Mm. Always got a plan. And we'll put one down here that kind of comes up. A little bit. Because it's nice when your painting goes around the edges. Pretty good. Pretty good. Rinsing out. Let's get some brighter yellow. Brighter yellow. Brighter yellow. Still a little bit of red into it. You can see I'm mixing it in there. It's not all the way yellow. So we're tapping out that little shape. Yep. And thank you for all the stars and support, guys. Really appreciate it. Hopefully all of you guys that are bidding on the original are happy with the direction that it's mm -hmm. going. <laughs> ah. There we go. It's called out of step. We're not totally done with everything down there, but we are getting there and we can move on to the bird. We want to make sure that you guys have all the time you need. How are you guys feeling? Are you loving that you're doing this? Let me check on questions. I've got a nice little file going on questions. And um, on YouTube, what brand of paint am I using? I am using Sennelier and Artist Loft Level 3. These are the two brands I've got today. This is not like Artist Loft Level 1, which I'm not a fan of. Artist Loft Level 3 and Sennelier Acrylic. You could be using the abstract. Um, and then Linda Clark said stars. Thank you, Linda Clark. That is so awesome. I really appreciate that. It's very exciting. You guys ready to keep painting? Mm -hmm. I need to sip my coffee, but it needs to be warmed. It's I been... Can... It's been minutes. It's been minutes. All right. This bird is so cute. He's just making me so happy. Use any brush you want here. You just want one that you've got a tidy little bit of control with. Much like what we did with our um, 
American Goldfinch. We're going to be painting in values. We're going to be painting in the dark colors and the light colors. So I'm going to grab a little bit of my magenta, a little bit of my purple, a little bit of my red, my cad red, mixing them together. I love these mixes. I'm going to come in here and underneath, maybe a little more cad red. I'm going to come in and paint his little shadow that's underneath his tail, underneath his body. It's very loose. You can see I'm not trying to paint in every feather, every detail. I'm talking gesturally. This is what I've got going on. If I need it to be darker, I go a little more into the purple. I come underneath the wing, as you do. I'm going to come under the tail a bit. These are early days. These are the dark shadows. Um, it's very important and get a little of that purple and red together. You can always, if you're having trouble with the mix, you can always get a little magenta in and it kind of zhuzhes it up a bit. I'm going to get some white and you can see the nice color that it starts to be. We're going to come up here. Now on his back, oh, Lily Pad says, I started helping her start painting with confidence and that feels really good because that's why we started doing this. All right. And come up here and I'm going to kind of define a little bit of structure to the wing on the back. And then I'm going to pull forward. Now at the front of the wing, I'm going to add a little more white. You want to pull that wing in by value. And then as we come back, maybe there's a little more red in that mix here. A little more purple underneath, pulling that out back into our lighter mix. So that's how we're kind of implying that structure of the wing that's coming off. You got to give the bird some structure on the wing. They have a little wing. You got to give them feathers to fly, right? Mm -hmm. A little bit lighter. Still pretty grayed out. I had to add a little more red to it. I can just the beginnings. Painting pretty roughly. And interestingly enough, I'm going to take a dark version of my purple and red. This is kind of a fun thing I like to do. And I'm going to. Start to speak about the feet, which will be perched around more delicately using that. Okay. Woo, we're going to cook then. All right. So we're cooking along. There's a bit involved, but we're going to keep moving. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to grab a little bit of my red and a little bit of my yellow together and begin to paint out the chest. A nice little chest, and I want to blend the red back into where my purple is. Going right over it lightly. Into the wing there. Got a little bit of kind of a kiss of red in those feathers. Kiss of red right now on that tail. Oops, got a little white on there. Sometimes it'll happen. I'll go to get another color and then something will get in it. And I'm like, ah, not you, not right now. Add a little bit of that purple blending back. You can see what we're doing is we're creating, oh, just a little drama, right? Just a little. A little lightness at the tail here. I'm going to come in and always get a little bit of your magenta and red in there and come off the head of the bird. And I'm just going to bring my brush back and let that crown happen. If I have to come on the toe of it. I will I just want to make sure that he's got a nice little get a girlfriend to top feathers because mm -hmm. that's his get a girlfriend spot. Yeah. 
that's what that's where you're going to get a girlfriend and we don't want to leave him unable to do so pulling that back a bit I'm going to come back into my wing color a little more white into it there we go A little bit along those little pin feathers back there. There we go, getting some wing going. And then I'm gonna kind of rough in his face and then we're gonna have really quickly go through uh, getting him painted in. How are we doing on time, babe? Good. All right, I'm taking a little black, adding it to my blue. And at first I'm gonna kind of go around him with this very light color. I know I'm gonna be putting an eye there, but I do want that gray. Come in with a little bit of my black on the inside of that line. The eye is a little bit kind of, I don't wanna say, almost like a sesame seed shape and going back, we've gotta put that into perspective. And what's wonderful, I'm gonna put a little of the other eye over here. See how I'm kind of bowing it out? Mm -hmm. Come across here, up over this eye, and you can see the little gray is helping me hold it. That's what we want to do. We want to have the gray help us hold it. We don't want the black all the way to the edge. We've got to put some red there and come around the beak, and then we've got a little bit of that. I'm going to take a little of this. And I come back under the wing. It's a nice little thing that we can do. Rinse out. A little bit of red. Got a little drop on there, and I don't want a drop of water. Now, let's call that a step, and then we're going to come right back and finish him out. Okay. Okay. We got time for cut taking a picture. I'm gonna Okay, all right, we're getting to the end So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna add the highlights and the shadows that pull him together and a little bit of drama to the top of our flowers this is really about making bold and exciting decisions with our paint, recognizing how light or dark something is and uh, adjusting to that. Now, first I'm gonna get a little bit of my yellow out, just a little bit of my yellow. It's okay if it gets into some of the previous orange red, just to tone it a bit. And we're gonna come up to the top and add some of that to our lantana. This is just some extra little drama that could be going on if you allow it. Mm-hmm. I'm going to allow it. Hopefully you allow it as well. You know? I can come into my white here. And then just make sure that my flowers have a little extra highlight because the sun's caught their eye and, and is making them kind of glimmer. Hmm. Don't forget that your flowers might need a little glimmer. Finding those spots where the sunlight's hit them and made them shine. And that will also help you with a bird. For a second, I'm going to grab my red. And it's okay if a little of my yellow gets in it. I'm going to come in and start to talk about the beak here. So that's point down, comes back. A little bit of my magenta and red. It's a nice way of cooling the red if it's needed. Creating that little drama triangle that we've got going on there. Drama triangle. Little red accent. Who doesn't love a drama triangle? I, I don't know. I mean, I like it. <laughs> I have to, to say, Korean daytime television has some good drama. This is this is super true. Come in and grab some of my red and magenta. 
And I want to make sure that as I warm it up, this area coming out from the cheek should be a little warmer. A little yellow into it where necessary. See how we warm that up? And then maybe a little more into the pure cat as we come around. Mm -hmm. come down here and just kind of fluff him a little bit a little into the orange another little highlight there in the orange where the light has hit the chest maybe a little bit right here some at the cheek Pulling it with the magenta as I go down. And bring a little bit over the wing. And then if I've got to come in and get into that white purple mix to just sort of create that transition, these, these beautiful birds have lovely transitions through their wings. They mm -hmm. are really quite spectacular. And I don't want to lose that, you know, even as I'm, you know, talking about that. So let's get a very light color. I've added some yellow to it because we're going to say just on the outside of that, maybe there is a little light that's coming out. I caught that, a little of the purple there, so that the tail can be in shadow. Now he's looking lovely. Now, let's get some little details going that just finish him off. Am I okay on time, babe? Yes, it is. Let's see, you got about eight minutes, I think. Oh, I have eight minutes? Maybe more than that. Let me look at this. Oh, my gosh. I will just relax and make a little circle for the eye. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm going to come around. And the beak kind of is defined by the shadow around it. I just put a line up to separate the top beak from the bottom beak. It is okay to take a little feather here and to take a little feather back out there. Again, it's all in just the black. I'm also going to come underneath okay. the purple on the leg. Oh, I was wrong. We have two minutes, not eight minutes. Okay. Well, then I am not going to relax. All right. I'm going to add just a little bit of a toe. Kind of one is hidden here. And come here. And let's, let's have a little bit of the foot kind of come around and hold that. I can come back into the purple here. Catch a little highlight where it's necessary because it needs a little highlight, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, top of the beak. Top of the beak. And come here with a little white. You can do it. And we're going to highlight the top. Left. Get into the blue and a lot of white. We almost, and maybe even some gray. We want it to be a little grayed. So we're going to come in just on the inside here and there and around out here. Okay? Oh, yeah. And you're going to come to the top. And it's like a little, it's like a little arc over the top of the eye. See how I'm arcing over the top of the eye? Mm-hmm. Right, over the top. Then you can come in and get some white. And then you can get a little more very light just to the inside there. Mm, too much right there. I'm going to tone that back. Oh, yeah. A little bit away here. Some light color. Push that there. Speak a little bit to some of the wing. It's really rather beautiful. Maybe to the front of the leg. Little That's a hard one. Yeah, but it's a nice highlight. So if we can catch it. No, it's, it's all right. It's a good one to get. And 
Let's shape that down. More red. Let you get your last minute of painting. I'm in. getting my last minute of painting in, right? You get you get a one full minute left. One full minute to touch and enjoy and zhuzh around. Sometimes it's good though to limit. I'm gonna kind of soften that and go kind of another direction. Sometimes mm. it's good to limit what you've got going on. You need to, you know. And while she's, uh, you know, make sure that there's a good. Line up of the eyes. Don't forget to check in the link in the description down below for all the information on the hop. So you the can, hop. You can find out where the next event is happening over on Ginger's channel. If you have fallen in love with this little bird, you can go bid on him. This North American Cardinal. All of our moderators will have information in the links and in the chat. All right, I think I can sign. Oh, look at that. I think that. we did it. Now, and we do have it on all sides, as you can see. This gives it a very complete painting sense. I'm going to take my signature brush and give it a sign. My mother is Ginger Cook Live. She's over on YouTube. If you go over there, you can paint the next bird in the hop. And I will be seeing you at the end of her class in 45 minutes. This one, I'm going to sign around the corner, guys, because okay. I just feel like a signature on the front is going to ruin the art. Mm. And that's the other reason that I very much like uh, gallery wrap is that I can sign the side. <laughs> so very see one of mine signed on the side, you can be like, oh, she might actually do that. What do you think? We oh, painted a little cardinal. A and wonderful. Th you did it. Did it. 45 minutes, 656 six canvas, cardinal and lantana. <sighs> Give yourself a pat on the back. We're nearly there. Six birds in one day. You can go by. You can buy the entire collection of prints, signed and numbered, limited edition from my mother and I. We'll both have signed them. Uh, you can get the whole collection. You can get just today's painting. If you'd like to win today's painting on YouTube, leave a comment after the show in the comments section with the uh, uh, hashtag the bird hop check rules and conditions on the website blog we'll be randomly picking a winner and announcing them on the 14th so if you can't if you can't buy you might possibly win and don't mm -hmm. forget you can go bid on this original painting as well or buy a mug so much stuff to do all right go descend upon my mother <laughs> Send on her and uh, see how she's going to paint the next fat, cute, adorable, colorful bird in the series. Oh, wait, I should do that. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. <laughs> and I want to see you at a really soon. Bye-bye.